All right, we have one of the shining stars of UFC Fight Island 4 this past Saturday night in a very important fight in the women's 135-pound division. Jermaine Durandamy submits Juliana Pena in the third round, put her to sleep with the nasty guillotine, and now the submission machine herself is joining us on the show. Jermaine, how are you with the new nickname and everything? Well, I love the new nickname. I'm doing great. I'm <laughs> yeah, I'm doing great. I'm, glad. I'm happy to be home and... Uh... You know, but I had a great time in Abu Dhabi. I had an amazing time in Abu Dhabi. And I'm doing good. What did you think of that whole situation? Because obviously it's a very trying time in, around the world right now. It's a very unique circumstance with, with the UFC just venturing off to Abu Dhabi just to get the international fighters on these cards. You seem like you had a good time, but what did you make of the whole setup and the bubble and everything they did to make sure that the fighters were safe throughout this whole process? Well, in the beginning, I was like, this is so weird because you have such limited space for yourself to go, you know, and normally when we, when I would go in, into fight week, you know, we go in exploring everywhere we can possibly go. But this time that was not possible, but I, I kind of liked it because it kept it very small and, you know, you keep the focus, but you still enjoy the time you have. And I have to say they did an amazing job and they took amazingly great care of us you know i i cannot say anything less about it and the, the good thing i liked about it is that everything went a lot of faster during fight night morning and yeah, morning <laughs> what was the time difference between where you are in the netherlands to abu dhabi because i know for the american fighters it was like a huge difference what was the difference like for you only two hours so abu dhabi is two hours later than it, it is here in the netherlands so it was not that much oh so that was like a nice little advantage for you <laughs> Well, and, and we only had to make a small adjustments in the in the trainings in the early mornings. But I'm an early morning person, so you know I was I was good with it. There you go. So first submission win of your career, and nobody saw that coming. I believe the odds makers had it at a plus twenty three hundred that you would finish the fight by submission. But it just goes to show you that in this sport, evolution never stops. How does it all feel a few days later to not just get a win, but to show the world that you still have some tricks up your sleeve? <laughs> You know, I always tell everybody, I'm 36 years old, you know, and I've been fighting for a very long time, but I love this game so much. So, you know, and I want to learn and I want to become better. And yeah, I have to say, it's nice knocking somebody out because, you know, that's what I love to do. But this one is very special, very special to me. And this one, I will stay forever close to my heart, I have to say. You know, especially because in my last fight, of course, with a man, you know, I didn't do so well on the ground and I know I'm better than what I've shown and, you know, and I still made a lot of mistakes, you know, and, but there's always space to learn. And, you know, I got the submission and that was a beautiful crown on this, uh, on this beautiful memory. Yeah, on our on our post fight show, we actually invited Laura Sanko on, and you know she she obviously has some insight being a former professional fighter. She still trains consistently, and she was super impressed by the submission because the execution of that choke was spot on. She said, I believe her exact words were that wasn't blue belt stuff. This was like high level submission stuff. So, and it's clearly something that you've had in your repertoire for quite some time, but we just haven't had a chance to see it. Do you think that you open up a lot of eyes on Saturday night that you sent a nice little message to not just Amanda Nunes, but the rest of your division being like, don't try to go to the ground with me. Cause uh, I might get a little sneaky on you. Well, I mean, you know, it always opens, it opens up eyes, you know, and it, it was more, the more important thing is for me, it finally all settles in, you know, because in the second round, I almost had the full flu choke. My coaches coached me through very well. And, uh, I know I almost had her there, uh, but you know, and then we worked a lot on that submission and from that position, because a lot of times when, and we saw that in my, in my fight with Amanda Nunes. Amanda shot very low on the legs. And, you know, from that position on, you know, it's easy when I can wrap my arm. I have pretty long arms. So, you know, if I can wrap my arms around it, you know, it, it's going to be stuck. And I, at the moment I slipped her head to the other side to put my arm through, I was like, I'm not letting go. This is mine. I'm not letting go. <laughs> <laughs> The, the first round, you were able to thwart Juliana's game plan for most of the round. You were able to keep your distance. You were landing big shots on the feet. She was able to get you down in like the final seconds. And then the second round, she got you down again and probably won that round. Like you said, you did lock in the Von Flu. It was pretty tight, but you weren't able to finish there. But it seemed like heading into the third, it was one to one. So what was the conversation like with your coaches between the second and third rounds? 
Well, they told me, you know, and I knew, I knew at the end of round two, I, I, I knew I lost that round and they told me, go have fun. And I, we, in the locker room, we had one thing and we discussed and we were like, if it's tied after the second round or I'm behind, we're just going to have fun. We go, you know, and I'm like, so right before the referee says fight, the, one of my friends, uh, I'm one of my training partners. She says, Jermaine, it's the third round. It's time to have some fun. And I'm like, okay, because I knew I had to put pressure on her. I knew I had to land more than her, but I still had to be careful, you know, because I didn't want to, because I knew if she was able to going to take me down, she was going to ride it out on top and, and it's going to be boring. And she was not going to take any risk because of the reverse I made in the second round at the end of the round. So I knew I had to be careful, but I knew I had to put a little bit more, pre- a little bit more pressure. And I felt a little bit tight, like I said, after the fight. I felt a little bit tight the whole fight. And, uh, you know, I didn't, I wasn't as loose as I wanted to be and throw a little bit more combinations. But, uh, you know, I, I, I just wanted to pressure her. And, uh, you know, wherever the fight goes, it goes. You know, I mean, I see a lot of, you know, some, I, I don't, I'm a very positive person and I don't like to read any negative stuff. And I've seen some very negative stuff about uh, Juliana about after this fight. And, you know, the thing I do want to say to people is, Man, that girl deserves a lot of credit. I mean, she's one tough, one tough warrior. You know, she, it was a ride or die and she died in that way. You know, she never gave up and she brought the fight. So all props to her and mad respect for her because man, she did that. And I gave her some tough shots. I can tell you that. Yeah. Did, did, did anything surprise you in the, at all from Juliana? Cause like, like you said, she did eat a lot of big shots. She even landed a few of her own in the fight, which I think surprised a lot of people. Did, did it go according to plan? I know you were a little bit tight. You weren't as loose as you would have liked to have been, but were there things that Juliana did in the fight that, that you didn't expect? Well, I didn't, I expected her to throw a lot of punches to try to shoot, you know, and because in the second round, she uh, tried to bum rush me with a lot of punches. And I'm like, Okay, <laughs> we're really gonna make this a, a you know a dirty a boxing match because I love to. So that surprised me in a way, but I was cautious about it because I knew she was going to going to do that to set up the takedown because she, I know she did that in her previous fights a couple times, throw a lot of punches and then shoot for the takedown. So I knew I had to be careful and didn't didn't let my I didn't uh, how can I explain that the best way. I didn't want to get involved too much in it and let myself go because then I was going to be flat footed. And I know that was the th- one thing I should not do in this fight. The mistake that I made in Amanda's, the fight with Amanda to be flat footed. I wanted to stay light and I had to be able to move back. So, but, uh, and I mean, she's a tough girl that, that I had no doubt about it, but she's tough. Mad respect to her. She's tough. So you have now won six out of your last seven. You've beaten everybody you fought in the UFC, not named Amanda Nunes. You're the number one ranked Bantamweight contender. But you just fought Amanda in December, and you know how the UFC is. They like to keep things fresh. So that puts you in a really interesting spot because you've clearly earned a title shot here, but you may have to win another fight, maybe two, before that happens in this current landscape. Is it a little frustrating to be where you are, knowing that you are there, but you can't really go anywhere at the moment? No, no, not at all. No, not at all. You know, I love fighting I, and I don't care. I, I could care less about rankings. I honestly do, you know, and if you want to fight for the title, you have to earn that spot. And maybe one good performance doesn't get you that title shot right away. I'm still ranked number one in the world and it's my job to stay ranked number one in the world. These are tough times, man. I mean, I mean, we're blessed that we can fight and that the UFC makes it possible for us to do what we love to do you know so if I have to fight two more times it's up to me to stay to stay the number one contender in the world and to prove I belong there and I'm still the number one and you know what the funniest thing is because uh earlier this morning I was thinking about it I'm like you know Amanda and I we both uh came in the beginning uh in the in the era when Ronda Rousey came to the UFC Amanda and I were both, we both came in, we were both signed in that time of time frame and we're still on top of the game. I mean, years, years later, so many have come and have passed and Holly came, I think a year or less later, but the three of us were still in it on top of this game, on top of the division. 
I thought it was pretty cool. You know, I was thinking about it. I'm like, damn, we don't do that bad for these oldies. You know, we've been here for <laughs> long from these girls and wow, we don't do that bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you mentioned Holly and in the main event, she had a great win over Ardini Aldana. Did you get a chance to watch that fight? What did you think of Holly's performance? I honestly, I had no chance in watching it because I had to do some interviews and then I had to go do some photos. Uh, so I haven't, I didn't have a chance to, to watch it. So I don't know. I heard people told me she did a great fight. So mad respect to her. But also for Adana, I mean, she's also a tough girl, you know, two tough girls facing each other. Mad respect to both of them. Yeah, Aldana was super tough because Holly was landing at will and it, it, she had a lot of kicks and a lot of punches. It was a... Uh... It was pretty pretty mesmerizing to see, but it seems like that everybody wants to see the rematch between you and Holly now. It seems like the stars are aligning, and of course, you ladies fought for the featherweight title at UFC 208. You got the win, but that night kind of began this strange relationship with the fans because of how that fight played out in the aftermath, etc. Are you interested in running this back with Holly, even though you already beat her? Because it seems like this is the fight everybody wants to see now. You know, that's always an option. It's always an option. You know, I mean, you know, I'm open to fight everybody. You know, I'm just, I just want to put up an exciting fight and give the fans what they deserve, you know, and make it fun. You know, I want to fight everybody. That's the thing. I want to fight everybody. So everybody is an option at this moment. Do you feel that a fight like that can finally help you and the fans move on a little bit from that whole thing? Because I feel like this happened so long ago and the sport moves so quickly that we, we oftentimes forget about things that happened a couple of years ago. But it seems like in your situation, between that whole thing with, with, with UFC 208, the cyborg thing, whatever, do you feel like if you go in there, you run it back with Holly, beat her convincingly, we can, we can finally move on from all of this negativity? <laughs> well, I already moved on. <laughs> I already moved on a long, long time ago, but hey, whatever, I, you know, honestly, that's, that's not something that's on my mind. If I have, I, I'm, I honestly believe I don't have to prove anything to anybody. You know, like I said, I am in this because I love it. And I have, a, I have a bunch, a lot of amazing fans still stand, standing behind me and supporting me, you know, and there's always people that, that will say or disagree with things, you know, and or have something to say about it. And that's okay. Everybody can, is entitled to have their own opinion. You know, I, so like I said, I don't have to prove that to anybody and it's an option, and it will always, you know, and we will see what the future brings. If Holly and I will meet again, we'll meet again. You know, time will tell and the UFC will tell and, and you know, it's not up to me. You know, it, we will see. It is not easy, especially now, to be as positive as you are, Jermaine. And that was like one of the reasons I wanted to have you on here, not just to talk about the win, because you are a very positive presence. Have you always been like that? Or is this something that you've sort of grown to do over the years with, with, with wisdom comes extra positivity? You know what I mean? I honestly, I believe, I think with wisdom comes extra positivity. And, you know, I have bad days, too. You know, I have bad days, too. Everybody has them, you know. I can be grumpy, absolutely. But... You know, I start to, you know, with the thing, with, with my job and the things that go on sometimes in life and not my life, but just in life in general, you know, it's so, it's so, it, it takes so much energy if you are a negative person, you know, because there, there can always be something negative or to complain about, but why not enjoy the things you have, the things we have, the things we are able to do. Because we're blessed that we're able to do the things that we can do, you know. And I believe that there are people that don't always have that positive. And maybe if they see somebody smile, maybe they get a little bit of a smile. You know, I mean, a smile is very expensive, but it's at the same time so priceless. You never know what a smile can do to a person, you know. So make the best out of it. And I mean, make the best out of life. Because life is so damn short. You better enjoy what you're doing. You know, because there's a lot of things you can't control in life. The only thing you can control is how you react on a situation. So make out of it something negative. Try to make something positive because there's always something positive. You know, one time a person asked me, so what's the positive thing if I shit my pants? And I'm like, yeah, that's a good one. Well, at least you lost it. You know, you dropped it. So you don't have to take a shit anymore. And he was like, well, if you look at it like that way, I'm like, yeah. I mean, it sucks when you have to take a shit, but... Man, okay, well, it's, it's now over. it's out. Now it's out. 
So yeah, I, I just like I just like to think it. You know, I just want to stay positive and stay true to myself, and you know, share with people that there's a lot of things in life to love. I used to be a nurse, a psychiatric nurse, and I've seen very, very sick people in a way, you know, and these people didn't ask to be this sick and they didn't, they didn't have always, they didn't all have joy in life. Sometimes some felt very horrible, you know, and it doesn't help to be then that negative, you know, give them something to smile about, give a person something to smile about. You know, you never know the person you cross on the street if you smile at them what that smile of yours to them means to them. So make the best out of it. Well said, well said. And clearly, you know, you, you took a lot from the Amanda fight because, you know, you, you weren't overly thrilled with your performance. You've talked about it in the media, but the positive spin, you feel like that you exposed Amanda. Like it was pretty interesting to hear you. Why do you feel that way? And and do you feel like the positivity that that you have helped you get past the Amanda fight and, and on to this next one, because it seems like those two sort of are hand in hand in a way. Is that, is that accurate? Yeah. Well, I, I believe, honestly, I believe positivity and, and self-reflection um, helped me go past this fight because it's very, you know, it's very easy to point fingers at people. But the only finger I point, first of all, was at myself. What could I have done differently in this fight? And I knew right away. I knew. So there was no reason to point at anybody. The only, re the only person I had to point at was myself. And then it sucked losing, but there's always a tomorrow. The sun will come up tomorrow. And I didn't change as a person because I lost. Yeah, it sucks. I mean, and you always get those awkward conversations. Then the person asks you, so how did your fight go? Well, I lost. And then a person be like, uh, okay, uh, mm, sorry. Yep. Don't be sorry. <laughs> you know, it's part of life. You know, there's nothing you can do about it. it. It is what it is. So that's the only sucky part about losing those awkward conversations. And you, it sucks. You know, I don't like losing, but it's also sometimes it's a good lesson because I've learned so much about myself and, and the mistakes I've made. And that helped me in this fight camp to change my not my attitude, but in a way it changed my attitude because um, I looked at things differently. And the things that I, that I, because I can be very stubborn in some way in, during fighting, you know, no, I want to bang, I want to bang, I want to bang. And sometimes it's not just, I just want to bang. Sometimes you just got to fight, you know, and do what the game plan is. And it, it was good because in this fight camp, I really stick through what I should do. This is the game plan. This is the way I want to fight. And even though in the second round, I abandoned the game plan a little bit, you know, in the first round, I already made progress because I showed I can stick to things. You know, I can stay light on the feet. I don't have to be flat footed. Just be disciplined about it. So, yeah. And I mean, it's not, you know, it sucks, but, you know, I didn't lose to, to nobody. I, you know, I lost to somebody with a very fight, high fight IQ and, and a great champion. So. All respect to Amanda Nunes. So Saturday night was uh, w w had some first for you. We talked about the, getting the first submission, but you got your first bonus in over four years. You knocked out Aspen Ladd in 16 seconds and didn't even get a bonus. This one did it for you. The submission machine. That's what it takes to get a bonus, I guess. How does it feel to, to get that extra 50 Gs and, and get that confidence of the UFC in order to get that honor? You know that it was the honestly. Oh, something went. Sorry. There you go. You know, um, you know. Yeah, of course. Everybody wants to have that bonus, and it's so funny because before the fight, I did an interview and I said, "I want that bonus." You know, I want that bonus this time, and you know, I didn't get it with the with the Aspen Lad fight, but th that's okay. You know, the bonus is cool because Christmas is coming up, so I can spoil my can spoil everybody. So that's good. I'm happy. You know, and. I'm opening my new gym together with my, one of my coaches in January. So, uh, you know, it's good. It's always, it's always good when you're doing a lot of construction work to get an extra bonus. You know, and I appreciate it a lot. So, uh, yeah, I'm happy with it. Absolutely. That's great. How, when, did, uh, when did this all start to, to get this gym going? Where is it going to be? And uh, this is exciting stuff. Yeah. So uh, the gym is going to be in my hometown, Utrecht. 
uh, and I worked. Uh, so it all started like uh, after the Amanda Nunes fight, I think. So my coach, which uh, I used to train with, we used to be training partners, and now he's one of my coaches. Uh, he said, "You got to do something with your talent," you know. And I'm like, "Yeah, but you know, it, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah." He says, "Why don't we just work together?" And I'm like, "Okay, that sounds." That's, and he's an amazing coach. He has so many great fighters, and more and more fighters come come to train with us, and. Um, and we had the same vision. So we first started talking about how our vision is about how a gym should be and what, what we want people to have when they enter the gym. And our visions were absolutely the same. And then, then he told me, you got to do something with your talent. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. You know, and he'd be like, why don't we work together? And I looked at him and I'm like, you want to work together with me? And he'd be like, I would love to work together with you. And I'm like, well, we have the same vision. We have the same views about things. Why not? Yeah. Why not put our strengths together and give something new, the new talent? Because kickboxing is u- is huge here in Holland, but MMA is the next big thing, you know. So why not? Why not do it? Why not give it a try? So we started looking at buildings, and we found a gorgeous building, huge, and we were like, "This is it. Let's go." And so we're now work doing a lot of constructions and. Uh, yeah, January 1st, we're opening the doors. So it's going to be one hell of a, a new journey to add to all the to all the busy things I'm already doing. Wow, congratulations to both of you. That's amazing. Do you have a name for the gym yet? Yeah, it will be SB Gym uh, slash Iron Lady. Oh, there you go. There you go. You might have to change Iron Lady to, to Submission Machine. but um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's easy to do, easy construction. Uh, I know... You always call your mom after the fights. You guys have you, you have such a close, close relationship with her. What was that conversation like with her after the win? Well, I so I called her when I was in the cage. So I'm like, Mom, Mom, you're not going to believe this. I submitted her. <laughs> <laughs> but I choked her out. And she'd be like, is she okay? Is she okay? And I'm like, oh, let me take a look. <laughs> She's awake, Mom. She'd be like, oh, my God. Is she okay? Wasn't it too long? I'm like, no, but I'm going to call you back. I'll call you back later, right? She's like, okay, okay, okay. So I called her back later and she's like, because people already uh, sent her the clip of the submission and she was like, she was out that long. Is she okay? I'm like, mom, she's okay. She's okay. The doctors will take good care of me. She's okay. And she was like, okay. Why didn't she tell? I'm like, I don't know. You can ask her. I mean, I don't know. And so she was very proud, but she was also, you know, as a mom, you know, and she knows Juliana has a mom and she is a mom, you know, so she, nobody wants to see their ch- child getting choked out. You know, that, that's one thing. And my mom is always concerned about my opponent if they're OK. Also, if I'm OK, because she she loves what I do and she supports me fully, but she doesn't want anybody to get her. That's my mom. It's a good mom right there. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect world. When would you like to to get back in there? You're having fun right now. You want to get back there, and you, I said, I believe you said you wanted to fight everybody. So when would you like to fight the the next in line? Well, I, you know, it's like I said, it's a very crazy time right now, and uh, here in Holland, uh, the COVID uh, um, people that are getting tested positive, it's going up a little bit more. So we're getting more restrictions, and we heard that probably Friday we get a curfew. So it's going to be very tricky. That means also, you know, I got to work a lot uh, because I'm, of course, I'm work as a first responder. So, but in this situation, I hope to be back in January, you know, but there's also a job to do. And there's also people that really need my help right now. And my colleagues, we we all have to stand as one team and together with all the other first responders. So uh, ideally, definitely uh, beginning of the new year, you know, maybe the end, maybe the beginning of the new year. That's our daily, of course. Uh, but like I said, it's a very strange time. So uh, we take things step by step. And uh, yeah, I, I, I honestly, I really, really hope. And I got the fullest support of my all of my colleagues and my whole team, you know, to get back in there and, and fight for the title again. So I got their support. Absolutely. But like I said, it's a very hard time, especially with the curfew now coming up here in the Netherlands. Uh, we have to see. But uh, I keep training. 
I'll stay in shape. So don't worry. I, I'll be ready whenever I have to be ready. That's a promise. There you go. I know Amanda is going to fight Megan Anderson on December 12th. That seems to be how the stars are going to align. So it kind of puts a hold on the title situation at 135 for a little while. I'm, I'm curious if, and, and I don't want to put negative juju out there at all, but if for some reason Megan can't make it to December 12th, would you have any interest in fighting Amanda for the other belt, or is that not an option at all? Oh, you mean for my, for my belt, right? <laughs> for the, yes, you are the first champion, so what a story that would be. Uh, I, you know, if, if, if I'm able, if I would be able to, you know, and, and, and the UFC would say, yeah, that's the only shot you're ever going to get to fight Amanda, again, I'll take it. But I've also said, if I get another shot in Amanda, and I will say it one more time to you, now I'll tell you a couple, but I will tell you right now. If I get another shot and fight Amanda and she beats me, I'll retire right then and there on the spot. I will forever stay second best. So if she beats me again, I will retire then and there on the spot. Wow. Because there's nothing left to do anymore. She's the only one, you know, that beat me fair and square, no problem. And she's the true champion. But if I, the third time I cannot make it to beat her, then... It is what it is. Is it like that for just Amanda? Or let's just say, you know, you fight She's Holly and she wins a, a close decision or something. Is it the same thing or are you still moving forward? No, my focus is, of course, on Amanda. You know, that's honest. You know, so no, it's Amanda. If she beats me again, I will retire. And I will retire as for my feeling as a true champion, as a true fighter with my head held high. But then, you know, I'm second best. She's the best. But I still believe I can beat her, you know, in every, every piece of my body and bone. Hold on. My, my dog comes to join us. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> it's the positivity. Yes. So, no, I honestly, I still, every piece of my body and soul believes I can beat her. And I have the utmost respect for the champ. No, n- you know, nothing less to say about her. But if she beats me again... That will be the end of my MMA career. And I had a beautiful career because I've seen it all, been through it all, especially with my submission win now, you know. I've done it all. I've seen it all. <laughs> so it will then I you know, I obviously I can't beat her then. So you know, you gotta be honest with yourself too. Wow. What a storyline that would be. Title versus career. Wow. That that writes itself. Yeah, but it's not a career, you know. It's not like she will end my career. No, but I mean, for what do I have to fight then? Honestly, can anybody tell me what do I have to... Do you honestly believe I have to fight four times for the title? No, I'm 36 years old. I want to have a family. No, I want to have a baby one day. I mean, then, then do I have to go and fight 10 girls again to get another shot at a title? You know, she's the champ, you know, and then she's the champ. And um, I always, you know, then then I didn't beat her. But there is nothing more for me to fight in anymore. I'm 10 times undefeated kickboxing champion and Muay Thai. I was the first featherweight champion and I couldn't get the 135 belt. Then it's okay. I had a beautiful career. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Nothing. This is giving me goosebumps right now, Jermaine. I'm not going to lie to you. A um, c- couple more things really go. I appreciate you giving me so much time today. You-, you talked about the first responders, and I thought you dedicating the fight to them, the way that you yes. did was was very cool thing. You-, you talked a lot in the lead up to the fight about the negativity police officers have been dealing with over the last several months because of a bad, a few bad eggs. And, you know, I've talked about this myself. I know a lot of excellent police officers so i don't think it's fair to paint all police officers with the same brush because of a few bad ones but you know have you had other first responders other police officers reach out to you to congratulate you on the win from like other parts of the country maybe in the u.s maybe on social media or something yes absolutely even juliana she thanked me for my service and her husband is a police officer and i thanked her that her husband and I thanked her husband for his service because they do they deserve respect too, you know. And I had a couple police officers, absolutely also from the United States, reaching out and saying thank you. And some nurses, you know, some some firefighters, military, 
you know, and all props to them. Like I said, all cool. I won the fight by submission. Amazing. But all props to them. They deserve the respect right now. Absolutely. In these hard times, they deserve it. And absolutely, shout out to them. That fight was for them, that dedication. And I hoped, and I said it too, after, after the interviews, I hope a lot of people stayed inside, obeyed the rules, stayed inside, watched some fights, you know, to make their job a little bit easier that night. So, hey, <laughs> maybe it's a win for all of us. Last thing, I, I feel that the way this interview has gone, we should we should end it in a positive way because you are a very positive presence and you want to be respected by your peers, the UFC, the fans, etc. You know, what is the message for everybody when it comes to you, the fight game specifically, and, you know, even what's going on in the world? What do you want to leave everybody with? And, you know, that last bit of positivity, what do you want to say to everybody? I just want to say to everybody, I know we go through a hard time. We all do. Every part in this world, we go into a very, very tough time. But as an individual, we're not as strong that as we all stand together, hand in hand, and it doesn't matter where you come from, what race you are, what color you have, what you believe, or who you love, it doesn't matter. We have to stand strong together. And if together, we can beat this virus. And hopefully we soon can back, can back, go back to normal. And remember, die with memories, not dreams. Congratulations, Jermaine. Amazing win against a very tough opponent. Now you're putting women to sleep with chokeholds. The arsenal is getting more vast as time moves forward. Enjoy being back home and all the best to you moving forward. Thank you for the time. Thank you so much. Stay safe and stay healthy for you and your family. You as well. Thank you.